Okay, I'm going to address a common question that I get asked from students, from other dog trainers as well, topic that comes up. And that is, how do you deal with clients who, or potential clients, prospect clients, who are kind of reluctant to working with you? And that may come from A, maybe you are a little bit out of their price range, or B, they're not fully comfortable with your training methods. Here's the thing. Here's how you deal with them. You don't. That is the best thing to do. Let's go over these two real quick. The client who uh, is not comfortable with the training methods. What will happen with this client is if you are, for instance, a purely positive trainer and this client doesn't really care so much about that. They, they're telling you, I want results fast. I want results now. And this doesn't kind of, you know, this doesn't go with your identity as a dog trainer where you're thinking, well, we need to focus on relationship. We need to focus on this dog wanting to and loving the exercise back and forth, so on and so forth. What will happen is this client will get sick and tired of your BS eventually. Okay? And I'm not saying that what you are about is BS. But if this client's idea of training does not align with yours, you're going to have conflict. Same thing on the flip side. If you are a balanced trainer and your prospect client is more concerned about not hurting its baby's feelings and you talk about providing consequences for things that you don't want them to do and this kind of strikes a nerve on that person, then what will happen is even if you manage to convince them, they will feel bad. They're not going to be consistent. And they always have some sort of resentment as to why they should not, you know, as when it comes to working with you. They're going to have some kind of reason as to why uh, maybe it'd be better to do something slightly different. More often than not, these people are not going to come to you. But if you find them kind of reluctant and that is kind of an issue, you just don't deal with them. I don't want to convince somebody that I am the right trainer for them. I can tell them, look, there are other trainers that could probably better fit your needs. And I'm okay with that. I don't want to constantly be doing this with a person. Okay, when it comes to my training methods, uh, I'm a balanced trainer myself. So what I do is I explain to people why I do the things that I do. So during my consultations, I will give a, uh, a little bit of an educational uh, spiel where I will tell the client, this is why I do this. This is why this will be beneficial for your dog. Uh, this is why this particular tool might help your dog. Now, in that process alone, I'm able to make people realize that this is the best approach for their dog, and it works out fine. But if I encounter that reluctance, if you find that, that they're kind of on the fence or they're going, yeah, but I'm not sure, but oh, maybe let's give it a try. You're gonna notice, and I know this from experience, from working with people like this, is they always have those, but what if, but can I do it, can I do it this way? And it's just a pain, you don't wanna deal with that, okay? The other scenario, let's say you are out of their price range. These people are even worse. You do not wanna mess with them. You don't wanna deal with them at all. So here's what, what the scenario looks like. They come to you, you do your consultation, you give them the, pri you give them the price, and they go, oh, that's kind of expensive. Uh, is there any way that maybe we could do a cheaper option? Or oh, they'll even go as far as asking you, can you give me a discount? Um, or they'll go, well, I'm planning on having my dog train with you like a lot. So because of that, can you give me some sort of discount? Here's why you don't want to work with these people. When they see you as too far out of their price range and they make you believe that this is a huge deal for them and they're making this very, very clear, here's what will happen. It doesn't matter how good your training is, they will not focus on how good the training is on their dog. The one thing they will focus on is how much money they lost because that's how they're going to look at it. If they go back and forth with you and they go, yeah, but the price, I don't know, you know, I'm going to have to get a loan or yeah, you know, this is going to be very difficult. Just skip over them. Just go, you're probably right. It's probably not going to work out for you. Maybe you should go to somebody else who is more affordable 
and just leave it at that. You don't even have to rag on the other trainers. You don't have to say, well, you know, they're cheaper because they're not that good. Don't, why do you care? Just let this person know. This other trainer will probably be best suited for you. And just leave it at that. Uh, but I don't want to have to convince a person that, you know, that it's a good investment. If they don't know that already, if it's not enough, their issues with the pro the issues with their dogs is not enough of a motivator for them to want to invest that money. I don't want them uh, because it's going to be a pain. It doesn't matter if you may if you teach that dog to um, heal off leash. It won't matter if you teach that dog a really really solid obedience. If you teach the dog to do all kinds of tricks, that won't matter to those people because the one thing they're going to be always concerned about is how much money they're paying you. That is the one thing that's going to be always a concern. And they're always going to want more and more and more because to them, they come up with such a big amount of money that they want as much as they possibly can. And these people are a pain. You do not want to deal with them. So don't deal with these people. They're just a waste of your time. Uh, they're going to be a headache more than anything. You want to work with people who want to work with you. And if during your original assessment and their assessment of you as well, you don't find that, uh, that chemistry, just go your separate ways. Um, I've had clients who were not comfortable with some of my training tools in the beginning. But as I talked to them, they were on board. Um, and I've had clients who could not afford my services but to them, it was important. So some of my clients even got loans. So my clients, um, I went to their houses and they could have definitely spent those $800, those $2,000 on something else on their house other than spending it on their dog by paying me to train their dogs. So if there is a will, if, there is, if this is important enough, they're going to find a way to work with you. Otherwise, don't do it. Don't try to convince them.